right. We're definitely we definitely have to do the Turkey Tom segment. Or sorry, it's John Swan. They're all the same person to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're all the same person to me. Because I'm old. It's not an insult to you. Well, maybe it is, because John Swan's a little bit of a suspicious character from Among Us, but you know, that's a whole different conversation that we're about to have. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the whole point of this. So here we go. We got a video from Jonathan Swanathan. It is called Just Just Gonson. I just can't read. Gus Johnson. Trial by Twitter. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I almost said Turkey Tom again. John Swan has a little bit of a rough history in general. I don't know a lot, a lot. My understanding is that um, he's uh, he's tried to go after Dream a bit before with uh, not real evidence. Um, and then he tried to cancel an 18-year-old for ch chatting with a 15 year old there was cringe chatting we'll call it um now listen if you're part of the twitter online that thinks that an 18 to 15 year old shouldn't be together i mean listen personally yeah i guess I'd, I'd say it was a little uncomfortable we did like a whole thing of how i would change age of consent before it was a fun segment but like based on society's moral value like it's okay so even if you disagree with the behavior and you're like, yeah, you know, I don't think it's appropriate for this, it doesn't mean that you that it, we understand that society's moral values don't agree with you. You are advocating from a a you are you are the outlier, and that's okay. That's what advocation is called. But you know, you shouldn't be like, oh my god, you know, pitchfork in your hand over an 18 and a 15 year old. I mean, oh my god. Um, the thing is, is that that wasn't the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that he tried to orchestrate it from the back, right? So he. <laughs> He like encouraged a 15 year old and a bunch of other like 18 year old kids to go out of their way to try to like write a document. And John tried to help, but then he also didn't want his name attached to it. And then he played this game where he's like, I had nothing to do with it. I was just signal boosting memes that made it seem like he was a pedophile. That's the biggest issue. Is that like if the at, at the we're, nobody said Gus Johnson did that? We're talking about John Swan. We're talking about John Swan. Are you fucking behind? Well, what are you talking about, bro? Did I say Gus? Talk about fucking John Swan, dude. Jesus Christ. This is who we're talking about. You son of a bitch. You're derailing my segment. Okay? This is the issues we're talking about. John Swan. Okay? <laughs> anyway. Sorry, I'm a little hyped up today. Anyway, Jonathan back to it. Jonathan Swanathan did these things uh at the very least he should have like if he had just been like oh i fucked up sorry that would have been fine he could have even said like hey i agree i still don't think it's appropriate you're wrong based on society's moral values but it's okay thing is he tried to put other people up to the task of trying to cancel this kid and then he didn't want to be attached to it because he did he knew that he fucked up right that's the biggest problem is that he's being dishonest now when it comes to gus johnson i'm going to give you a real short recap from what i remember Listen, here's here's what this boils down to, I think. I think what this boils down to is that when Gus was younger, he was a shitty, he was kind of shitty to his girlfriend and immature. And I think that moving forward, I don't think that he's going to be that person forever. I think his apology was like typical YouTube bullshit garbage, which makes it come off as like fucking incredibly disingenuous. Um, and that didn't look good for him, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't say that Gus is like a morally dysfunctional, horrible person. I think that he was like immature and shitty, and I think that we've all been there for the most part. Right? Doesn't mean they have to like him, but I don't think that Gus is like this, this you know, horrible person. So this video here with uh, John Swan, it reads to me one of two different ways. Number one, the way number one is that John is talking about Gus Johnson as a way to say like, look, Gus is worse than me. So by association, I'm better, or by comparison, I'm I'm okay, I'm better. I should be able to exist. Or he's pointing to Gus in a way where it's like these two situations, my situation and Gus's situation are comparable in some capacity. And I got canceled on Twitter for nothing. That's what this says to me, where he's just using this video coming back uh, as a way to kind of just be like, oh, guys, I didn't do anything wrong. But either way, he's back. Uh, fortunately, um, he's back. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, fortunately, he didn't actually succeed in canceling that other person. So, that's it. Uh, that's it. Let's get going. Yeah, yes, we're dating and it's going really bad. 
we don't want all our friends to know that we are really sad. This is oh. YouTuber and comedian Gus Johnson, and this is a video he uploaded in early 2018, where he and his then girlfriend Sabrina sang about the failing couples on Facebook. Maybe then our pals will think we're full of smiles instead of frowns. She's the best. She's the one. So Having fun. I guess, uh, I guess they really identify with that segment. <laughs> when it comes to happy couples, we are couple number one. Our mission is accomplished. We faked another day. And, and though we're filled with pain, we'd rather stuff it all away. But little did we know that this light-hearted satirical song would become a reality in one of the- It would become. Nice. The most unexpected public relationship dramas that the internet had ever seen. Huh? This- the audio is all over the place. Gone people. Wait, how can I get a different? I want to get a different. Let's introduce era. the players. Gus Johnson, a well-loved creator known for his viral skits, sketches, and commentary videos. Chances are you've okay. probably seen some of his content before. He's been on the platform since 2010, although he really gained popularity around mid-2015 with his first viral video, How to Get Free Food from Subway. Hi, I'm I'm, I'm Gus Johnson. Today I'm Gus Johnson. You just have to. I think you just have to try to molest a kid and they give you free food, right? And today we're, I'm going to show you how to get free food from Subway. His popularity would continue to grow pretty steadily from there, yielding many more viral videos as well as some collaborations with some pretty popular creators. 2018 in particular was a great year for Gus Johnson on YouTube. He had countless viral videos to his name, a successful podcast run with co-host Eddie Burback, and an incredibly loyal fan base following the boys support boys mantra. But obviously, you can only see what a creator wants you to see. Okay. And behind the scenes, things in Gus's personal life were being put under great strain. Okay. It now becomes important to shift focus from Gus to Abelina Sabrina, who, okay. in addition to being a YouTuber and comedian, has also done voice work and currently runs a political Twitch stream. Sabrina began dating Gus in late 2017. Does she really? Does, does she do pol politicals? Politics? Is that real? Okay, I'm gonna look into that. Interesting. And it didn't take long for them to start creating content together on their respective channels. However, not long into their relationship, oh, Sabrina and Gus's life right. would be shaken by a distressing health crisis that would leave its mark on them for yep. years to come. The ectopic pregnancy, right? It's very sussy, very unfortunate. Fast forward to October 2021, and Sabrina opened up about these issues in a compelling and emotional 24 minute video where she discussed. There's a little bit of editing in it too. A little zoom in, zoom out for a uh, dramatic effect. Just saying. Just a pregnancy that nearly ended her life. Obviously, I can't do the video justice here, so I encourage you to watch the entire thing on Sabrina's channel. However, I'll summarize it as best I can. So years ago, I found out that I was pregnant and I did not want to be. I was not ready for that. I made a doctor's appointment. So they referred me out to Planned Parenthood. I... I think too, for context, it's, it's important to bring up that they had discussed the converse, they had a conversation about how if they ever did get pregnant, that like she would get abortion. And I remember talking about that and I was like, like, listen, like it's really easy to say those things to make that like, uh, to like make that contract. It is really easy to do that. What is really difficult though, is that like, once you get into that situation to actually make that choice of like, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of it. It could be really tough, man. I think that people think that like abortions are like a really easy like kickwalk joke, like haha, no problem. But they can be like depending on how late. I mean, if it's a pill, it could be totally different. But depending on how late, the, uh, you know, th that uh, it happens, um, it'll get more and more potentially traumatizing. It's not an, an easy situation for a woman to, to talk about. I understand where Gus is coming from. Where he's like, we we agreed to do this, that, and the other thing. But I'm just saying, man. You know, once your hormones are aging, it's a totally different story. They, you know, made the appointment there. Although she always knew the plan was to terminate her pregnancy, as this was something her and her partner agreed upon, the clinic placed many doubts into her head, constantly checking with her that this is really what she wanted. Of course, her partner was on the other end of this and shut down Sabrina at every turn. So it was really scary. You know, that's really interesting. Um, the idea of like the, the clinic being like, is this really what you want? Is this really what you want? The only reason it's so interesting is because... Um, I mean, this might have been like the moral value of that of that place, but there's a lot of uh, like there's a lot of places. I forget what they're called, but they're pregnant. They're, they're called pregnancy crisis centers or something, and they're really just like religious institutions that are designed to try to um, get women to not have abortions. And they do like really fucked up shit. Like they'll be like, "Oh, you have this long for viability, so you can get your abortion," and then like they'll give you the wrong date. So when you come back, you're like, "Oh, you're not eligible anymore." 
So great to be receiving all this conflicting pressure from medical staff and your body to not do it and then being pressured by your partner to do it. It felt like I didn't even have a choice. And I did have moments of weakness where I would cry and say things like, okay, but honestly, like, can we just consider like, what if we didn't do it? Still gonna do it. But can we just consider what would happen if I didn't? He would say like, no, it's, it's not even a question. You're gonna ruin my life if you do that. It, that would be the worst thing to ever happen to me. And at one point, he even said that he would break up with me if I didn't do it, and that he would resent me and the potential child. And while all of this was bad yeah, enough, uh, this was only the start. That's sad, man. That's why we have to get rid of premarital sex. No, honestly, it's like a fucked up situation because from her perspective, it's like, oh, I have this thing growing in me and I don't want to get rid of it now necessarily. Versus like, hey, we, we, we sign a contract. And again, women's hormones shift a lot, you know? And so like, I think that what he said was shitty, but then at the same time, it's like, okay, but like, I get where he's coming from. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's just a fucking shitty situation. My thing is, is like, I feel like there's the potential. Um, I feel like there's, there's, there's the potential for them to be like le less safe when it comes to like sexual engagement because they're like, yeah, we'll just abort it anyway. I feel like there's a possibility there and you obviously shouldn't, you shouldn't use, uh, you know, and we can't prove that that's true, but you shouldn't use abortion as like a, uh, it should be like a last resort. It's like a necessary evil. It's not something that you should just be looking at though, you know? Of Sabrina's problems. In trips to Planned Parenthood, they weren't seeing anything on the ultrasound, even though Sabrina was at the stage where they should have been able to see something. Appointments were delayed further, leaving Sabrina to go home without any answers alone. A common theme in this medical nightmare. I woke up at about 4 a.m. to the most intense pain I've ever felt in my life, in my lower left abdomen. And it was so sharp and painful. I went to the doctor multiple times. And one of the first times I went, the lady was just like, well, just take some Tylenol and go home. What do you want me to do? And then I went again later that day because yeah, I, I remember saying, I was like, you guys have to like make, understand that like doctors don't give a fuck about you. You have to like be really pushy with doctors sometimes and don't be afraid to do it because they don't necessarily give a shit. If you look at the statistics of like how many deaths are caused by, um, what is it called? Not, it's like basically the word accidents in some capacity, miscare, something like that. Like you'd be surprised. So make sure that you're be annoying when you're out of the hospital, be as, be as annoying as you feel like you need to be because better than being dead. So much pain. And they said, oh, you're probably miscarrying. Go bleed it out at home. She requested imaging and further examination multiple times, but she was turned away. So she persisted, still holding down a job Medical while in unidentified yeah. and unimaginable pain, taking medication in order to manage it. Okay. I was at work. And then all of a sudden, the weirdest painful sensation came over me again. But yeah. this time, it made me really dizzy and faint, and my heart was just racing, and I had this pain in my lower abdomen. I just knew something was wrong. And so I left work early. I called my boyfriend and I told him something's wrong. I'm going to- I remember this video. It's so interesting because she's like, I called my boyfriend at the time. But like, I think everybody knew who her boyfriend was at the time, you know? I think it was rather obvious. Hospital again. I don't, I don't feel well. Something is wrong. And he said, okay, well, I have work to do and it involves other people. And then we're going to go out and get dinner and drinks with them. So I had to go to the hospital alone. And I was there for about four hours by myself. Sabrina- you know, like it's so interesting looking back on this now, like after everything happened. I wonder what the specifics in that experience are. And like this is one of the problems is like Gus didn't really defend himself. He was just like, oh, what I did was shitty. You know, if you don't think that you're wrong, you should probably defend yourself more. Because looking back at it now, it's like, okay, what does that mean? Like if was she consistently going to the hospital and it became almost like a regular in their relationship so that he was like, okay, like, are you going to be okay yourself? And she's like, yeah, sure, because I have this thing. You know, how much do we know? You know what I mean? Like, what is the true context? Because, like, I used to date somebody who had constantly had issues. Um, like, they had a, an autoimmune disease. And, like, it's rough. But, like, you know, shitty situations become almost normalized sometimes. It's like, oh, you're going to the hospital. Yeah. All right. Fuck. You need me to come in. And I would usually go. But, like, it didn't require constant hospitalizations. But if you're constantly... Like, actually, I did another girl who had... I forget what it's like. My first girlfriend. She had a, a shunt in her head that drained the fluid from her head to her stomach. And she was constantly going to the hospital. So, at first, I was horrified the first time it ever happened in our relationship. But by, like, the end of it... You know, not the end. But, like, after a while, you get used to it. It's like, oh, you're going to the hospital every couple months. It's like, you know, you're like, oh, okay. Like, that's... Uh, you know what I mean? So, I wonder. I truly wonder what the context is. Nina finally got the in-depth ultrasound that she had requested all this time and waited alone until her partner showed up moments before the diagnosis. I had an ectopic pregnancy in my left fallopian tube. It ruptured. I've been bleeding internally ever since. They were surprised I wasn't dead and that if I don't have surgery right then and there, I was going to die for sure. And as an added bonus, 
the surgery might not go well and I might die during that too. Here, sign these waivers and paperwork because you don't have a choice anymore. Damn. Well, that is what it is. It sucks, anyway, so man. surgery finished, and it I didn't sucks. even consent to this because clearly, like, I was under like general anesthesia and barely waking up. I did not consent to being kicked out at three a.m., but they did. They wheeled me out, and I I couldn't even really stand up all that well by myself. I was extremely nauseous, and it was awful. Critiques of the American medical system aside, Sabrina was still left with postpartum symptoms and an incredibly fragile state of mind. She couldn't tell her family or most of her friends what had happened out of shame, and that left only one person for her to lean on. It was just the worst, and, I, and, he, and boyfriend started to resent me. And so I, I tried bottling it up even more and, and not telling him until I was absolutely certain that I needed to go to the doctor and I would not be able to drive myself. Like, I try really hard to be independent, but sometimes I just can't. And at one point, he was talking about how hard it was having to take care of me when I would have those moments. Mind you, I never... You know, it's like, again, that's like really interesting because I remember back in the day when I was talking about, I started by dating my first girlfriend. I had a buddy of mine. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. His name is John. Not not to be confused with Jonathan Swan. Okay. The different John. Um, And he was, I, I was dating a girl. He's like, you know, I don't think I could do it because I don't think I would want to be with somebody who could potentially have that happen to my kid. And like, it would be a lot of work. And you know what? This is unfortunate. But like, it's an unfortunate reality, but like, yeah, man, it sucks when you're somebody that requires a lot of maintenance because of like what you got going on. But then also it's like, uh, you know, you can't expect somebody to like, I don't know. It can be very stressful trying to take care of somebody. I just get it, you know? And it's one of those things that it's like conflicting. Like, this is the thing. I feel like people are looking at this as like Gus is right and wrong or she's or Sabrina's right and wrong. I feel like this is a this really boils down to like a shitty uh, relationship experience, and um, that's it. Like it fucking sucks, you know. And like, there's probably some parts of this where most parts of it we we shouldn't have even necessarily been able to weigh in on it, you know. Never stopped him from doing anything or going anywhere. He still continued to live his life as if nothing ever happened. And there I am in the background in the shadows, just trying to pretend that I don't feel like I'm dying. And then he would sometimes tell me things like, you know, someone else would have left you by now, right? And then it would get to the point where I would ask for help, take me to, you know. I mean, that's shitty. I wonder what the context is because that's just shitty regardless, but you know. The only reason I ask that, I mean, that's just shitty regardless. Sometimes I make fun of my wife and I'll say, no one will ever love you as much as me. But I love my wife. <laughs> but like she said it to me too sometimes because we're both a pain in the ass. I, maybe, I, I don't know if that actually happened in this situation. Though. Maybe I'm being too generous to Gus right now. No, urgent care, please. I can't drive myself. And he would say like, oh, well, call the advice nurse and then I'll take you. And then he would insist on listening to the phone call to make sure that I wasn't exaggerating my symptoms. Or even when he would come with me a few times to the doctor, he would, you know, sit in and correct the doctor on things that I was saying from his point of view because he didn't want me to exaggerate my symptoms. Or, it was a lot. But um, it just felt like I had to grow up even faster. And it sucked. It's important to note that Sabrina kept the name of her partner anonymous in this video. But in the hours after the video's well, release, who's gonna, the internet well, Who's going to be like, who, who are you talking about? We, I think we all knew. No time. And to be honest with you, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I, w I do wonder if she would have posted the video if it wasn't a, another famous person who she was dating. You know what I mean? Collecting their evidence and reaching the unfortunate yet obvious conclusion that the partner kept anonymous in this video was Gus Johnson. People scrolled back on Gus's Instagram and found a post talking about Sabrina being in the hospital um, that matched up with the dates in Sabrina's video. It's stressful, but uh, I think you have to have the opinion to not go out with friends uh, or drink with friends, at least be in the house with her on the couch watching some TV to comfort somebody you claim to love, especially if they're close. I get what you're saying. I mean, like, this is the this is the thing. This is the thing. Okay. Because, like, I think that ultimately, wh whether we want to believe it or not, it's almost impossible to... It's going to be impossible for us to know the exact situations that are happening. And a lot of time in relationships, once a relationship ends, um, people tend to look back on events in their relationships in a way as, that is as charitable to them as possible and to the least charitable to their partner, especially when people aren't communicating. And, um, you know, I think that that's something people should kind of keep in mind when they when they when they talk about these things um and of course his response was like abysmal dog shit so it's easy to be like fuck him 
But I feel like there's a factor there as well. You know what I mean? Like, how I'm not saying that what she's saying is a lie. What I'm saying is, like, how much of that is, like, the way that she felt about something. I know this is so difficult, but, like, let me see if I can try to, like, relate. Like, let me see if I can try to, like, communicate this to you guys uh, in a way that makes sense. So, like, let's say, okay. Okay, let me, I don't know how exactly to do this. Okay, let me just use an example. So, I went to Disney with my wife a while ago. Maybe somewhat recently. And when we went, the first couple hours that we got there was miserable right we got there and what had happened is we got to the park we we pretty much went from a plane we went from a plane to a hotel to the park first day disney park right and um what happened <laughs> this is so fucked up what happened is when we got there we parked the car and um you know we went about our day we parked the car and we went to the uh, park. We went we went to go to the monorail from the parking lot and you have to wear a mask. So I took my mask out of my pocket, realized I don't know where the fucking car keys are. So we had to go all the way back. So you have to go from the parking lot to take a tram from the parking lot to the monorail. So we had to go back to the monorail to the parking lot. My wife's like upset. She's crying a little bit. Not like, Ooh, but she's upset. I'm fucking st stressing about losing the keys, about how I'm going to have to wait in the parking lot while they come give me a new keys, a new set of keys and this and the other thing. We found them. That was okay, but we we're still upset. And we got to the park, and then the first like twenty minutes in the park was like overwhelming. We didn't know what to do. We were almost regretted it. You know, we didn't. It was like, oh my god, it was overwhelming for us because we just got there and it was like a lot of shit. By the end of the night, it was amazing. We had an amazing time. But like, imagine I'm trying to think. imagine we broke up, and my wife was like, yeah, you know what? And she remembers that day, but she we're never gonna break up. But she's like, yeah, and you know what? We went to Disney. It was fucking horrible. And he talked about leaving. We both said like, oh man, maybe we shouldn't have done this. You know what I mean? And you're like, fuck, all of a sudden you're having, you're having a bad faith interpretation of like an event because after the event, you like things went a little bit differently. Whereas when you were there in the first place, you weren't so upset about it. I, I don't know if I'm communicating this the right way. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh. This was later confirmed by Sabrina on Twitter, where she was found liking tweets that mentioned Gus by name, as well as in her YouTube comments, where she replied to people Gus also Bus. mentioning Gus by name. It was further discovered that the obligation that Gus had on the night Sabrina went to the hospital alone was actually a podcast recording that he did with Parker Games. People also started to look back at Sabrina's catalog, namely to her video about getting her rhinoplasty. In this video, she spoke further about Gus's neglect during the recovery process and how he was streaming opening Pokemon cards while Sabrina was going through pain and suffering in the other room. I well, I, I think in that case, like, what are you, I'm not trying to be an asshole. You have to work. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, like, you have to work. So, this is, like, the thing, man. So, like, I, okay. So, she got home, and she had, like, a rhinoplasty, right? She got home. She's feeling a little fucked up. But, you know, you got to work. So, the guy's like, hey, I got to go do a job to make money for us. Oh, okay. And he goes and he does his job. Why is this so slow? What the fuck is happening here? Um, I don't necessarily see a huge problem with that. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you, you you gotta work. I'm just saying, but okay. I'm just saying. I don't know if. Oh wait, that's why this is so bad. Um, that's all I'm trying to say. You know, like I get, I can get why. Like okay, I have to go to work now. All right, you know, like and then he's acting goofy, but like that's his character, right? Um, makes sense. I'm just saying. Like that helped me fall asleep earlier because I was I was really struggling. And then he hopped back on to go stream. And he was just like, the second you want me to come back, I'll come back. No questions asked. I'll, yeah, I'll be right back. Don't worry. I was okay. like, okay. And that made me feel secure. And I texted him multiple, multiple, multiple times while he was streaming. So just a few, okay, look, you're almost done. Question mark. Are you coming back soon? What's okay. up? And he would just like say like, oh, well, I have, I have, I have to do 10 more. Like, it's an obligation at this point. I'm just... All right, so you're like, hey, are you almost on? That's the difference to me. Like, I need you right now, but okay. Within the following days, a creator that was once seen as rock solid began to erode. And with all of this, people naturally started to demand a response. And four days later, it was we so got bad. That. I'm aware of a <laughs> it was such a, an abysmal fucking response, dude. It was terrible.
recent video that calls out some actions that I'm not proud of and I want to apologize. The circumstances were incredibly hard and complicated for the both of us, and I can't even begin to imagine how difficult it was for her. We were young and not remotely prepared to deal with all the realities of a long-lasting and traumatic medical situation. During the talks, counseling, and therapy we went through together following this time, I came to grips with my behavior and realized my shortcomings, and I would like her to know just how deeply sorry I am. I fully realized what I did was wrong, and I wish I could change how I responded and acted during that time. I've grown a great deal since that happened, and I wish I knew then what I know now. I will continue to grow and learn and strive to be a better person every day. At this time, I'm stepping away from the podcast, and the remainder of this year's live shows will be cancelled with full refunds being issued. I will also be taking some time off from posting and working for a while. I'm you know, not for nothing. Gus Johnson Flashy sus, sure. just resubscribed for six months. Gus Johnson sus. You know, after listening to that again, it actually wasn't that bad. I remember the Twitter video being really bad. But that actually wasn't that bad. That was actually okay. That was actually, a, that was decent. I was like, yeah, I did shitty things, but we were both kind of young. That's what I get out of it. I wonder... Okay, it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, I don't know. I wonder what my energy was at the beginning of this controversy. So I remember, I, I remember, I remember, I remember after the other part where he did the video announcement, that was like, I felt like that was bad. Um, I wonder what issue I had with it. I know an issue I have with it is like, I'm stepping away for a while is like, kind of like a weird thing to do. It's because it comes off as like a genuine, a general YouTube apology. Maybe it wasn't that bad. Unfortunately, this apology fell flat for a lot of people, including Sabrina, who publicly denounced Gus's statement. Gus's close friend and collaborator, Eddie Burback, also mentioned how hurt he was to find out that there was so much more to the story than what he'd been told over the years. Sabrina responded to this tweet with support. At this point, the majority, especially on Twitter, were on crying during the snow video. You didn't like that. What, do you, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Sabrina's side. But the internet moves on pretty quickly, and people would stay mostly silent on the situation until around six weeks later, where Gus made an unprompted and ill-timed return with a sketch about somebody childishly exaggerating an injury for <laughs> That was a really bad look coming back. I don't know why the fuck you would do that, dude. He had to have known that. Tension and sympathy. Maybe not the most optical sketch for a return. I feel like he may have gotten away with all of this scot-free if the topic of the sketch was something else entirely. Yeah, probably. He also posted this on Twitter, where all the hostility was going down, which was probably not the best move. He got ratioed pretty badly. Damn. Naturally, Gus's return got people talking about the situation all over again. The comments on this video were also completely unmoderated, which led to people previously unaware of the situation finding out about it for the first time. All oh yeah, the video with the mom where... Um... Where they were like laughing about the like how hard not laughing they were talking about how hard the year was yeah yeah okay I didn't like that one yeah but I'm trying to like look back at this through like a different frame now and it's like did I get like did I get this wrong you know um you know what I mean like did I get part of did I get some of my energy wrong you know like I. I, I, I because I think back then my energy was like fully empathetic to her, which I think is appropriate. But it's like, I think that this really boils down to a really toxic relationship situation or a shitty situation in a relationship. And I feel like these situations are like happen a lot more than we think, you know? So, all of this prompted Eddie Burback. Or I wonder if this is like the way that John Swan is portraying the information to try to make the comparison that Gus isn't that bad, neither is he. I don't know. I don't know. To address the situation on stream, which was promptly clipped up. And post yeah, maybe you. like my the level of frustration I had was too much. It's possible. Yeah. YouTube. I mean, I'm, I saw you guys pretty much all assuming it. Like the podcast is not coming back. I don't want to get into private details too much because I that makes me uncomfortable. But if I'm being honest with you, like trust between us from me is completely broken, and I just can't work with him in the future. He knows already. I told him, but I just don't feel comfortable doing it. At this point, the drama had gotten much larger than it initially was. With this specific stream clip and amassing over 700,000 combined views over separate uploads. What and when a drama gets that big, it's pretty hard to just- What, the stream clip of him doing that? What do you mean? Ignore it, especially when YouTube viewers begin to find out. Go yeah, whenever it's paraded on the internet, it always seems worse. Yeah, you know, that's one of like the really fucking shitty parts is that like, it's so hard to, sometimes it can be kind of difficult to like get things as right as possible when you talk about shit on the internet, because you have so many people yelling, and if the social narrative is in one direction, like, it unintentionally, like, can possibly hit you without even realizing it. And then you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? 
You know what I mean? It's just so once now that the energy's toned down, like it, it seems, it feels a little different. You know, the outrage isn't there. That's like the hardest thing about being like a commentary content creator that like that tries to get it right. Like I don't really give a fuck about writing social narratives, but sometimes like you unintentionally get like fucking drawn in, and that's one of the things that gets like difficult. It's like fuck, I, I want to obviously get like I want to try to be the voice of reason and like the most reasonable perspective. I don't want to just fucking grift for views. So needed to address it one final time. And he did just that around eight weeks later, where he uploaded a video talking about the last few months. Hi everyone, I'm sorry I didn't make this video sooner. I stepped away from social media for the last three months to really reevaluate everything that's going on in my life right now. Oh, and I'm here hard. to talk to you today about everything that's been happening. I think that during that time, I was so close to the situation that I was not able to fully realize and understand the pain that my partner was going through. And I was not able to fully understand the impact that I had on that situation. As the medical situation continued to last for many months with no end in sight, I just, there were just times that I just said some stupid stuff and, and some things that, that just caused my partner additional hurt. This medical situation happened over three years ago and we continued to date for a few more years after that happened. And during those few years, we talked about this medical time a lot and we sought couples therapy together and, and individual therapy and, and this was discussed at length. And I think that it just took me a while to really realize my shortcomings during this time and the impact that I had on my partner in this terrible period and, and how my words and actions made the situation worse. And that was something that was hard to realize. And like, this is actually is not the worst apology. Uh, it's just not very specific, which I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, yeah, they dated for a while after. Yeah, fuck, bro. I feel like I really fucked up the Gus Johnson situation like really bad. It, like watching this now, like this is fuck. This is shit, dude. Like I, I should have been more. Uh, I should have just been more fucking intelligent about it, because like this is this what he's saying is like yeah I was shitty in a relationship, and then like afterwards I got like you know we I fucked up and we talked about it and it got better afterwards. Um, and we stayed together, you know, and, and you know, and then they said he went, I, I think though like I think that there were claims that like the 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 therapist was just some TikTok person talking about opening up the relationship though so that part I think is shitty from him. Um yeah, I know this was the bad response. It's not that bad except for the potential lie about talking to some TikTok therapist. I don't remember if he responds to that though. We'll see. It just made me feel very foolish and remorseful. Papa got L. Yeah, I mean, shit happens, bro. I mean, I could have just sat here and like, doubled down and been like, yeah, you know, I'm still right. Fuck this guy. This is a bad response. But like, I'm trying to, you know, which most people would probably do so that they don't look stupid. But, you know, it's my behavior at certain periods during that time. My I think the part about the therapist turned out to be a TikTok therapist discussing an open relationship, but that possibly might have been a misrepresentation from Sabrina. I don't remember. I watched an internet a J video. I will we'll see here. Partner and we'll I see split here. up a few months ago, and I'm glad that she's finding a new sense of self. And I'm really glad that she feels comfortable sharing this story as part of her healing journey, and I hope she keeps doing it. I, I'm sorry that I caused her hurt during this time, and I'm sorry that I was not the partner that she needed. <laughs> you know what I, really difficult. You know what I would have said, though? I would have been like, bro, I fucked up. I was sh a shitty person in the relationship, but we fucking settled that shit, and now she's coming back, and she's just trying to fucking get after me. Like, that's what I probably would have said. Like, fuck that shit, you know? Um period and the hurt is extended beyond that there are a number of people who, who engage with my content or who i work with professionally that have been negatively affected as a result of my actions and my words and i just would like to extend my sincerest apologies to these people as well i hate disappointing people i hope that my former partner can use this moment in time to to heal and and find some peace and i wish her the best despite the obvious inconsistency with gus saying that he spent three months off of social media this was honestly not a terrible response. He took responsibility for his actions and didn't try to blame anyone else for what happened. And he even supported Sabrina making the video and speaking about her experiences. This was also going up on his main channel where the- I get, I, I think, uh, so very, I mean, very clear the framing here from John Swan seems to be that like, Gus isn't so bad, maybe, I don't know. We're still figuring it out. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe he should've come out the gate more aggressive. Shit, I would've. But again, you know, I don't think it was that bad. The numbers were obviously in his favor, which led to an increased number of people supporting Gus in the comments. This should have been where the situation ended, but it seemed Gus made even more errors in this response, with Sabrina tweeting that she had never been to couples therapy a day in her life, 
a clear contradiction to what Gus said in his video. We sought couples therapy together and, and individual therapy, and, and this was discussed at length. This then turned into a pretty ugly Twitter back and forth, with Gus tweeting receipts showing the sessions that were paid for. And Let's see, $200. Yeah, I remember that. Sabrina clapping back with a pretty scathing response. Unlicensed TikTok dating coaches are not therapists. These okay, sessions yeah. were not regarding my pregnancy or PTSD at all, but mainly centered around Gus's desire to f other people and yeah. have me be okay with it. While Gus not a good was response. clearly winning with the numbers on YouTube. Not a good response. Not a, like if that's true, I mean, that's a, that, see, that's the problem. If that is true, um, which we, I, right now, I don't know. If that's true, nothing he says is credible. You know what I mean? So like at that point, if you make a lie like that, you know, where you're like, yeah, I want to fuck other people. But you were saying that that was therapy. Um, That's a very bad mis misrepresentation. What I will say is he literally could have just been like, yeah, like, this is the thing. If he had just said, like, yeah, I was shitty, but we moved on from it and we kept dating and I tried to better myself. That would have been fine. For, that would have been fine. You don't have to always throw a therapist in. Maybe that was my issue. Everybody talks about going to a fucking therapist every time they do something stupid. But like, what does that mean? I'm going to go get help. I'm going to go see a therapist. But like, for what? And then we have another example of like a YouTube apologist person potentially using like a, the therapist as some kind of like um, get out of jail free card. So... It was pretty clear where people's allegiances lay on Twitter, with Sabrina brutally ratioing Gus's tweet. She did later delete this for reasons unknown, but by that why? point, the further damage to Gus's image had already been done. Wait, why did she delete it though? If it wasn't, if it was true. Shortly after, Sabrina posted her final statement on Twitter. She established that she never wanted to vilify Gus, but that she just wanted to share her struggle. And according to Sabrina, Gus never attempted to reach out to her privately. She also felt that Gus's apologies had not been sufficient and that he did not represent the situations fairly, adding that she needed to accept that true accountability may never come. Well, what does that what does that mean to her? I wonder. Like, what does it mean true accountability? Like, what does she want from him? I wonder. Instincts thus far were to correct the record but it hadn't given her the closure that she was seeking, so she intended to no longer engage with the topic. Since Gus also indirectly mentioned Eddie Burback in his response, Eddie also streamed a little later, where he addressed it one final time. What is... I wonder what... Um, I wonder what she, would make her feel satisfied with the situation. Like, what did she feel like she needs in order to be able to get closure? Like, what does accountability look like to her for Gus? I wonder. I mean, that's... Did she ever state that? I feel like that's a really important question. Probably because his chat was being spammed with people asking for his thoughts. I feel like I was put in a position, I was streaming an hour later, and there's an apology kind of, sort of, to me without mentioning me at the end. It's well, not enough it? for me, but oh, I don't this. need more. I don't want more. So I don't expect it of him. I don't want it of him. I want to keep moving on for it. And this would really be the last thing I'd say, because it's just like, I don't I don't want more uh, from this. And you guys have been cool and we've been enjoying the stream, but it's like this weird elephant in the room that I feel like I had to address because I was I'm streaming an hour later. This clip is also uploaded to YouTube and got over 400,000 views. For a lot of people, just seeing how done Eddie was with Gus and the whole situation actually held a lot more weight than any of Gus and Sabrina's responses. Eddie was a close friend of Gus, working with him on content and their collaborative podcast for over three years. People argued that he wouldn't just drop Gus completely if it wasn't serious, and the fact that he wanted nothing to do with him really stuck with people. These statements were seen by millions of eyes, and if Eddie had stayed silent, I think the situation would have stayed rather small and Gus would have gotten pretty minimal backlash. However, since the controversy first began in October, Gus has lost a total of 300,000 subscribers. Wow. Conveniently, very close to the amount of people subscribed to the Gus and Eddie podcast. Over the coming months, Gus would power through, continuing to upload sketches despite the subscriber loss. And although his views weren't as high as they were before, he still managed to collaborate with some other YouTubers in the process. But in the background, people were still talking, speculating, and calling Gus some of the worst names in the book. While Gus was previously like described head. as being a dismissive, insensitive, and irresponsible boyfriend, he was now being called abusive, manipulative, and incapable of feeling any empathy. As some yeah, I think that's a mischaracterization. It sounds like, dude, it really just kind of sounds like he was sh a shitty person in a relationship when he was younger. <laughs> like, or, and it's a, oh man. Now be uh, being called abusive, manipulative. Gus John's actions were justified and his apology is embarrassing. This is so vague. I mean, with the whole context of that potentially lying about the TikTok fucking goop, uh, the therapist, that could be the biggest issue. Relative ...and incapable of feeling any empathy. As someone watching from the sidelines, these hyperbolic characterizations started to unsettle me a little bit. You really got to come out the gate swinging. If you're fucking, if, you, if you're innocent, man, you got to come out the fucking gate swinging. Um...
You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. Because sometimes, like, if you're innocent, you got to fucking, like, you have to feel it. You can't be like, yeah, here's a reasonable stand sometimes, I feel like. Because these people are fucking, man, this they tear you the fuck apart, bro. God damn. You know? I don't think he's abusive and manipulative. Fuck. Jesus. It does often happen that when one side is given all the airtime, the story does become massively skewed in that direction. There are always two sides to every story, and it didn't even feel to me like Gus even had an opportunity to explain himself properly. Any additional response to the drama would have been seen as drawing it out, or making Sabrina relive her trauma, or swinging his large fan base around to intimidate others. But at the same time, I believe that Gus really felt like he needed to say something, whether that be to correct the record or just get things off his chest. But it couldn't be on his own platform. Instead, he went- Instead, I gotta piss real bad. I'm gonna go pee real quick. Come, uh, give me like two seconds. I've drank like, too much water. Fuck. Ugh, I'll be right back. I'm not gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna lick them clean. Don't worry. Bam, 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 Back to the, back to the, uh, back to the thing. Back to it. And on to another content creator. Oh, okay. We got a little bit of con. We got this thing called content. Somebody said hi. I might be late, but she chose the therapist and only deleted her tweet calling him out for this after he made it clear that the therapist was her choice. Oh, so the therapist was her choice? Was the therapist her choice given the context of like talking about whatever? I, I wonder like were they did they expect to I, I wonder okay, this is gonna be weird. I wonder Okay. So the therapist was her choice. But was the therapy session originally intended to be a conversation about their relationship in the context of what happened in the past? Or um was it supposed to be about like some kind of open relationship thing? I, I wonder. Created his platform, pay money Wubby, to finally speak his side. He spoke to Wubby on stream on the 7th of April for almost an hour. And it yeah. definitely shed some light on things we weren't previously aware of. And it painted a slightly different picture of Sabrina and her motivations. I've done my best to condense it here, but obviously I'm not able to do it full justice. So I'll link the full conversation in the description. I would love for an opportunity to kind of like share some stuff. And I just want people to know up front that my intention here is to not try to discredit or disrespect anybody, but maybe just like clear up some common misconceptions that have been out there for a few months. You know, this has been something that I've had to deal with every day for the last half of a year and it, it's dominated a lot of my life. So I just wanted to kind of come in here and just talk a bit about some of it. So um, she and I had talked a number of times about what would happen if she did become pregnant. And we had both agreed that since we were really young, uh, neither of 
us really had any money. We couldn't give a good life to a child. Um, so we had agreed that, you know, if a pregnancy did occur, that we would seek termination. It really worried me right away that wow. Sabrina began to express a change of her mind in regards to what we would do with the kid. And, and I didn't deal with that in a very mature way. I, I was really f fearful. But there was a, a lot of implied pressure to the point where a lot of people called abuse uh, of, of the abortion. They're taking what she said and they're, they're expanding on it that like you weren't open to conversation. There was stonewalling. Is that, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Is that how it went? I, I can't speak too much to the minutia of conversations that I had, you know, four years ago, but you know, we did talk about this a lot. I didn't say that we shouldn't talk about it, but at the same time, I recognized that some of the language that I was using was not the most conducive to a very team oriented approach of like, what do we do here? I was just really afraid what to do. And we just weren't ready for the situation. And I think that sometimes I just said some stupid stuff. You went quiet and then we got an apology and we got a few different responses. Can you maybe explain how you're feeling right, at the time? Yeah. Was it a blind side? Did you know it was coming? Uh, no, I did not know that it was coming. It, it was a complete blind side. This situation happened before her video came out. It had happened about three years prior. We had stayed together uh, for the three years after that. Um, you know, and during this time, we talked about the situation a lot. I apologize for just the dumb stuff that I said and I did during some of that time. And it was a really painful, traumatic experience for both of us. And I, I thought that it had been dealt with within the context of a I wonder if it was, why was it traumatic for him? I guess because his partner was dealing with something. Um, okay. Relationship in, in any of the three years since this happened, she had not expressed any interest in sharing the story publicly. And also, I was undoubtedly blindsided uh, by this situation. And unfortunately, after that topic situation, I mean, that was really just the tip of the iceberg. In the months and you know the year that followed the surgery, she and I went to so many doctor's appointments together, saw dozens of specialists, and, and went to countless emergency rooms and urgent cares. Our, our lives day to day were pretty heavily dictated by this situation. It was not uncommon for many of the days a week to have some semblance of an episode with Sabrina occurring. 95% of the time, you know, she would be having trouble communicating and would be hyperventilating. Sometimes I would get frantic phone calls while she was driving and afraid that she might pass out and, or she would be waking me up in the middle of the night and insisting that, you know, we should go to the emergency room or the urgent care. And she's always saying, it's different this time. It's different this, this time. It was not uncommon for us to have a few days in a row. Was that part edited out? I feel like I didn't hear that part where both of us were getting just a couple hours of sleep at night. I didn't know what to do anymore. And, and mm -hmm. the thing is, during this time that lasted for months, you know, there were just times where I was so exhausted. And I got frustrated at the problem, at the situation. It seemed like it wasn't getting better. And sometimes I said some stupid, flippant, short things. I, I've since apologized for these things. It's embarrassing. These weren't things that I woke up in the morning and just said to her, you know, this was born out of a, a constant state of, of fear and, and exhaustion and frustration. And that does not make them okay. We got to the end of the- Oh, I watched an edited version of the conversation. Wait, why did they, did they remove this from that edited version? Why? I feel like I never heard any of this. Why would why was this removed? What? Why did pay? What? Did, am I am I just misremembering, or I feel like this just wasn't part of the conversation? I feel like I did not hear this at all. Am I just a fucking idiot, or or what? year and it just was so clear that we tried everything we need to break up and it was pretty shortly after we did privately break up that I was watching the dog one weekend and she came back to get some stuff from my house and to get the dog and this was before I put out the public statement I was texting her that morning saying like I want you to weigh in on what we have to say I don't want to put out anything without checking in with you I understand that we're both public individuals and I just don't want anybody's interpretations of us to fall on the other side like let's let's work on the statement together she surprised me because she came back in and she had brought me some gifts and said that she wanted to get back together with me that she Okay, I don't know if it was removed or not. I feel like it was. But what you're saying is you think that maybe it had something to do with because like he's Wubby's on Gus's side and he thought this would make him look bad. This doesn't make him look bad at all. This makes it look like a normal relationship experience. Like she was sorry that it didn't work out and she didn't want to give up and she said she wanted to come back into my life and I just looked at all the effort that we had put in in the last year and I just thought that we had really given it as much of a try as we possibly could and I just said I'm sorry like I'm not I'm not there I don't think it's a good idea and she screamed at me and said you know you put out whatever you want but don't say it was mutual that's a lie and she slammed the door and left my house um, and then really shortly afterwards this video came out <laughs> she, she took to Twitter the same day that the video came out and she was liking tweets and retweeting things from random users that I, I just feel like really unfairly mischaracterized me it was beyond stuff like that too you know she took to creating memes about me and the situation and continued to post about this and unfortunately it, it didn't just stop from a public front she took to a lot of my friends and, and people that i do business with that aren't publicly personalities as well and, and tried to get them to stop working with me tried to cut off connections i know this because in the last half of a year i've had a number of these people come to me personally and just say that she made them feel extraordinarily uncomfortable by the kind of conversations that she had with them following this video i i've been really gearing up for a big tour this year um
I'm not sure what the sessions were about uh, supposed to be about, but if he mentioned the session in his apology, knowing that I had nothing to do with the it had nothing to do with the type of pregnant situation, uh, that is sus on Gus. Yeah, I agree with that. On the other hand, if they did discuss the pregnancy and his actions in the session, but she chose to be petty on, on a technicality, it wasn't therapy, even though they went to somebody that she chose, that would be sus on her part. I think the problem with this is that like it boils down to like we, <laughs> almost ironically, we shouldn't be, oof, this is none of our, we, we never should have really weighed in on this. We never should have had an opportunity to weigh in on this. Listen, that's coming from the way that I'm feeling about it right now. Um, and the reason I say that is like, I think the, uh, what do I want to say here? I think that for people who get like social media attention, it can be a very quick um, idea to jump to social media when you're frustrated about something, if you have a platform. But there are a lot of things in people's lives that like probably don't belong on the internet. You know what I mean? Like that's pretty much it. And you have people in a public setting weigh in on things, and in a non-responsible way. You know, um, and it kind of just causes this. And I'm, I'm telling you, like, you know, I would say based on this that I, I have to say, I think, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, unless this is just like masterfully fucking edited to make Gus seem really innocent. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people, I understand why like Pete, Sabrina and her friend, uh, her friends would be on like the, his, her side or whatever, because they're friends with her and like they are privy to her interpretation of all the events. Whereas Gus and his friends are uh, privy to the interpretation of um, the events from his perspective as well. But like we're all bystanders and we're weighing in in this way where it's like, oh my God, I believe this person. I don't know. It gets a little bit toxic. Um, we never really should have. We never really should have had the opportunity to talk about this. You know, and like it's easy to say that now, like months, months, a year, months later. It's like, fuck, bro. Like, God damn. Like, I think that, like, I, I think we fucked up. And I think I'm part of that fucking up. Uh, like, I feel like I'm a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? The only thing I want to say is, like, I, you know, I never meant to say anything. It's like, you know, you try to do that. You try to get it right, man. <laughs> Sometimes maybe you don't. And I'm not even saying that, like, Sabrina's a piece of shit asshole for this. I'm just saying that, like, this is, like I said, this is two different. Um, this is, like, this is a situation where, like, you have, um, Two different people that had a, and a shitty situation happen, and they're gonna have their interpretation of events based on the way that they felt, and they're gonna filter their response to those uh, the, those you know that way, and like we should all recognize that and kind of keep that in mind for context. And this probably never should have been like public in the first place. Um, and that involved working with and collaborating with a number of folks. We put a lot of time and, and energy into this, um, and it just got to the point with my expectant hiatus during this whole situation uh, that I just I didn't have enough time to really dedicate to this tour and stuff, and I had to cancel this. Um, it was probably a few weeks ago at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I announced on Instagram that I had to cancel the tour, and then without about an hour of that, she she tweeted out that showbiz baby. Um, <laughs> the next major point on there. Mm -hmm. With uh, with regards to Sabrina, dude, why didn't we? I swear to Christ, I I didn't hear any of this. Am I just, a, dude? Am I just fucking an idiot? Is this just all the stuff that wasn't put in the original video? Like, what the fuck? Video? Do you have any? You kind of touched on this briefly, but I do just want to make sure I ask it directly. Do you think that she had some sort of intent behind it, whether it be the video or her activity on Twitter, or do you think all of it was just her way of sharing her truth as a way of healing? That's a really tricky question. I think that given all the context that I laid out here mm -hmm. with her not uh, expressing to me that she did want to share that previously to this, this was never something that was talked about. It was immediately after a breakup and it was immediately after her trying to re-enter in my life and then me declining that. It, it's hard to think that of somebody that you spent four years of your life with. I don't want to think that of her, but it's very difficult for me and the behavior that she's exhibited in the last five months. It's hard for me to draw any other conclusion other than the fact that she was extraordinarily upset with me and wanted to try to damage me in some regards. And again, I am not saying that to try to discredit her situation and what she went through mm -hmm. but it really seemed like that was utilized as a way to try to pull some terrible out of context situations and tack together a really scathing review of a person and their um, reputation this interview was definitely shocking to listen to wow well shit well damn well damn yeah. 
Hearing Gus's side of the story, which at this point had been completely ignored, definitely added a lot more context to the situation, and again, I would invite all of you to watch the entire thing linked below. However, despite what anyone might say, Gus definitely flung a lot of mud towards Sabrina in this interview. He presented- Was that in the video and we just didn't fu- Dude, I must be an idiot. Okay, well- A lot of claims that obviously don't have any evidence backing them up, so you pretty much just have to trust Gus's word. I understand- Well, I mean, that kind of goes back and forth for both of them, right? I mean, it's kind of he said, she said type of a deal. Oh. Frustration about something that, from his perspective, was an intentional attempt to damage his career, but I would have appreciated a little more of a measured approach from him, or even from Wubby, when these claims were made. Despite all of that, though- I don't know, man. I think that he should have came out the fucking gate with that information. <laughs> Honestly. But, okay. So, it's definitely worth a watch. For a short while after this interview was up and released, the general public seemed to be on Gus's side again. People were sympathizing with him in the comments. And part of that probably had to do with Gus going on Wubby's stream, someone that had been critical of Sabrina's video in past streams. However, this piece didn't last for long, as Sabrina had a few things to say and address about Gus's appearance, which she did a few days later on her own stream. However, instead oh. of watching the conversation from start to finish, she picked and chose what to respond to, not even playing any clips from the interview. She even presented some new information about Gus in an attempt to drag him down even further. There was a moment where after my surgery, like maybe like maybe more than a few days after my surgery, I don't remember, but it was certainly shortly after the surgery. At one point he said he was glad it was ectopic because then neither of us had to choose and the choice was made for us and it worked. Oh, that's fucked up, but I mean, <laughs> that's really fucked up to say. But I feel like given the context, it's like there's different ways that you could say that. Like, I don't know, man. I come from a family with like really dark humor. So like, let me give you an example. My aunt died. And uh, like one at one point, my aunt had passed away. And, um, you know, my family started playing hot. Like they were playing fucking hot potato with her, with her, with her ashes. She was cremated before the burial. So, like, that's the kind of joke that, like, I would potentially make. Not to be an asshole, but, like, as, like, a, ah, like trying to be funny to lighten the mood up. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's what he did. He might have been like, yeah, I'm fucking, thank God, this fucking bitch. You know what I mean? He could have been like that, or maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to tell exactly. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, uh, maybe I'm, uh, I'm just saying, like, it's possible that he wasn't, uh, you know, trying to be rude about it. Maybe he was. This is the problem when he got back and forth. So, like, where's the context, you know? Out. So happy. So glad it was. Listen, that's just my fucking. So happy to that's not a... have one of my organs anymore. So happy to have a slight reduction in fertility. So happy to have a higher risk of this happening to me again. So happy to have lasting nerve damage. But hey, at least I didn't have to choose. But one day in the living room, I just felt it coming on. And this one was a weird one too, because my face went numb, like my tongue went a little numb and I started like flaring my speech a little bit. And I had chest pain, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, dizziness, I felt like I couldn't stand. And I asked uh, if he could please take me to the doctor. And at first he said no. He said to call my insurance's advice nurse. And then if they think that it's severe enough, then he'll take me. I was okay. upset, understandably, but I left to the other room and I started making the call anyway. I had the phone okay. to my ear and then he came in and he insisted on listening to the phone call. I said no. And he tried to take my phone away from me. So I wasn't gonna let that happen. And so to try to keep my phone with me and on my ear, I tangled it into my hair like this to try to keep it there, thinking, you're not gonna touch it. You're not gonna touch me. And I was wrong. My hair got pulled while trying to steal my phone from me hard. And that's when I just like absolutely broke down sobbing because I did not expect that. As with Gus's yeah, claims about Sabrina, shitty. these obviously have no evidence to back them up. And it all comes down to whether you believe the individual person or not. And personally, that isn't really a standard that I like to use when judging the validity of allegations. In the stream, Sabrina also acknowledges that she did ask Gus about getting back together, but she had some issues with his retelling of events. About a week or two weeks after we had broken up, I had to fly to Mexico to my sister's wedding. My life was like so different. Like one week we were looking at houses to get together and the next week um, I'm living alone in a hotel trying to handle my PTSD because one of the things about it was that I couldn't sleep alone. So I was- Does she um... Does she go to a therapist? I'm just curious. Does she see a therapist for this stuff? Um, I just wonder if she's, is she open about that? Cause that sounds like shitty. I get that. So it sounds like she's going to say like, yeah, you know, I want him to sleep with me cause it's part of like my shit makes sense. But you know, if you broke up, you know, he can't be responsible for you anymore. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be rude. 
starting to reconsider like oh my gosh was was this a mistake because at least i knew how to like maneuver in in that life and i and I panicked a little bit and so that part is true i when i got back from mexico because he was watching eva for me I, I like i really didn't actually picture us getting back together but in my mind i think i just wanted to know that i tried my best that i did everything that i possibly could and then it would like be out of my hand i was actually even texting uh, a friend but uh yeah he got there i had the packages i was picking up eva i said hey i think maybe we could try to work on it I'm sorry for my part in this. Do you want to try? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what to say to that. What is her part? What does that mean? I'm just, I'm just, no, hold on. Did I hear that right? For my part in the, I said, hey, I think maybe we could try to work on it. I'm sorry for my part in this. I'm only asking what that means. Cause like we never heard what's her part in this. And like, what did she do wrong? But to me, it's like, oh, there's. Listen, when you're in a relationship, nobody's 100% correct. I'm just wondering what that means. Um, I'm just wondering what that means. You know what I mean? Like, what is that? I'm, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but like, okay, what aspect did you feel like you did wrong? Like, what was the relationship really like? It sounds like we didn't get like the full access of the relationship, which is impossible. How do you fully access a relationship like this? Um, okay. Do you want to try? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what to say to that. And that was all I needed to hear. I just said, okay, got quiet. Because again, if I'm upset, I don't yell. I don't scream. I don't do any of that. And I had my old senior dog with me who was like very easily startled. Like, I'm not going to yell. The fuck? I'm not. Everybody who knows me knows that I am not like a yelling person. That's not me. That was just a blatant lie that I screamed at him and that I slammed a door. First of all, why would I slam a door? I have my dog with me. I'm not going to squ risk squishing her little foot. I don't slam doors. I'm not the one who does that. Sabrina also addressed Gus's claims that she tried to turn his friends against him and the conversations between Sabrina and Gus's friends had made them uncomfortable. I just wanted to confirm because I know that after the breakup that I made a conscious effort to not make people feel like they had to cut ties with Gus. I made sure I said, I understand if you still want to be friends. Oh, that, that's totally fine. And then they would ask me like what happened. And then obviously I would tell them about like some of my experiences and some that I, I don't want to share on stream, but I would have these conversations and you know, people just made their choices on their own. And so in the last 24 hours, I followed up with a number of friends. And the thing is there's a big circle overlap in, in a lot of these friend groups where if anybody ever felt like I was trying to manipulate them into cutting ties with him, then somebody would have heard about it by now. But even when I'm not around, I am now being told that when I wasn't around, if people talked about it, people were in solidarity with me and people made choices on their own. Sabrina also concedes in this stream that she didn't blame Gus for starting to get fed up having to deal with her constant episodes. So long, Something that I wish would have been made clearer in her video. Fed up having own. Sabrina also concedes in this stream that she didn't blame Gus for starting to get fed up having to deal with her constant episodes. Okay. Something that I wish would have been made clearer in her video and statements. I didn't blame Gus for starting to get real tired of having to help me when these PTSD episodes were happening. Hell, I didn't want them to happen. Yeah, I don't I don't blame him for being tired of having to help me that much because it was a lot. It was a lot. And at one point he started to get angry when I would express that it felt like I was starting to have an episode. So I Okay, listen, like obviously his response is like not good uh, based on what she's saying, but she's saying that she can be empathetic to the way that he felt because it was a lot. So why did you I don't like I, I get that. Like this is one of those things where it gets into like, dude, it can be really hard and stressful. To like constantly be a support system for somebody, especially when you're their only support system, especially in like a younger relationship when you haven't been together for 40 years, you know what I mean? Or, or like an extended period of time, you know what I'm saying? When you're still in like that, that, that the initial aspect of the relationship. So I just, I wonder why make the video in the first place if you understand where he was coming from and then the responsibility, well, she's just expressing her truth. Like, okay, well, how come you didn't keep bring those things in for context i'm just i'm just saying dude it just feels like it just like when you look at it like that it's like wait why did you you know if you could understand why then why why um i'm trying to be a fucking asshole i just know relationships can be really difficult and you know obviously she has something that she has to work on or rather there's something that she has not to work on she has like the situation with like, you know, really, you know, tr like trauma and everything. And I get it. That's hard. But, it, you know, that could be really tough to, to engage with. And when you're dating somebody, you know, you're dating them to feel them out. And if that's too much, I can understand why somebody would walk away from that or be get really frustrated. 
um especially when like it feels like you know it seems like the doctors maybe were, were failing her around them as well it wasn't just like you know he wasn't just being a piece of shit it's just i don't know man again this we probably never should have waited in on this in the first place like this just shouldn't have been something that was public i i feel i, I do i i um I started to try to keep it to myself and I would try to drive myself to the doctor and most of the time I did it was only when I couldn't that I really 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 asked him to, to like drive me um Nick Nick is not green was a friend of both <coughs> of theirs and says some stuff Sabrina told their friend group that I've never seen anywhere else not sure if it's covered in this video it might oh I get what you're saying I don't know if it is or isn't but like I said before you'd expect somebody that sides with Sabrina to like take what she says without you know Listen, people are going to choose sides, and the, each person, I don't even think either of them are representing themselves uh, in a disingenuous way, but they're probably not going to represent themselves the exact way that actually happened. So you're going to get very biased perspectives, and people who agree with one side are going to have the perspective of that one side, and people who agree with the other side are going to have a perspective of the other side. You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to be able to get, like, an actual solid, accurate, like, oh, this is exactly here, there, and everything. People are going to choose sides, you know, based on their history and, and uh, you know, in general and the way that they foresee different events and their potential ability to be able to identify with particular situations. So, like, even with that involved, if we're saying, hey, Gus was shitty in the relationship, I think we knew that. The question isn't, was he shitty? The question is, is like, is it redeemable shit? You know, like, was he shitty because he's a malicious piece of shit? Or was he shitty because it was a relationship that was really hard for both of them? And they just didn't happen to be compatible with each other based on, like, a, a series of dis different situations. I mean, that's the question that I, I think is a little bit more relevant there. I'm just saying. Me or something. As one of the last things addressed, she also presented her defense to the tweet that she made directly after Gus's tour was cancelled which in my opinion, leaves a lot to be desired. I didn't know when his tour was canceled. I don't keep up with any of that. Um, and I just that? happened to tweet. I don't know if I was like listening to like Chicago or if I saw like a TikTok or something, but I just happened to tweet. That's showbiz, baby. Oh, I f that's not true. I just don't think that that's, that's far too convenient. <laughs> like, I just don't believe that, you know? It would make more sense that she's like, based on the way that she portrayed him, that she thinks that she he's a real piece of shit. And so he, she's like, good, fuck you. Now, I could accept that answer. <laughs> I would accept that answer. I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. If that's your perspective, like, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. I'm happy that you're failing in life. You know, is it right? I don't know. But like, whatever, I can get that. But I don't believe that. I don't really believe the what she's saying. That, oh, it was completely irrelevant. I I don't believe. I just, I, it's just almost impossible to believe. It's too convenient. Diet. I didn't know when his tour was canceled. I don't keep up with any of that. Um, and I just happened to tweet. I don't know if I was like listening to like Chicago or if I saw like a TikTok or something, but I just happened to tweet that showbiz baby. Like, like I, I guarantee you, like bro, like in this situation, she's got her and her friends fucking like uh, scouting or even followers of hers watching Gus to give her information, like what's going on here, what's going on. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, come on, I, I'm just, I'm being, like, come on. I'm not. I've been around the, I've been around the block a few times. I know a little more than that. I'm not that stupid. Like, eh, 1920s kind of uh, kind of vibe but i didn't realize I until he that. said it like in the interview that like i guess that tweet came after he canceled tour i had no idea i don't i don't keep up to date with him like i am purposely trying to keep all of his stuff off of my feeds like out of sight out of mind and it has been great it has been so helpful so that one actually kind of made me laugh i thought that one was pretty funny <laughs> i just don't show biz baby after this stream i just don't think that's an honest interpretation <laughs> from her but okay that's show ba that's show base, baby a final video by a friend of Sabrina's, Nick is not green, was released. All right, this here video we go. went over the interview between Gus and Wubby, and it later became incredibly popular, garnering over 600,000 views. Ooh. However, as someone who was actually leaning towards Sabrina's side while doing research for this video, I felt that Nick's video uncharitably clipped a lot of the interview and drew many conclusions that just weren't fair like at all. Setup, yeah. I actually watched both the interview and Nick's video for the first time right after each other, and I just disagreed with a bunch of the framing especially. I feel like this may have been a spur of the moment thing that he wrote and released, and he probably should have had someone more neutral look it over. I 100% understand that he wants to fight for his friends, but I believe it's also important to recognize that as a friend of Sabrina's, his view could be pretty biased, and you yeah, have to keep sure. that in check while making videos like these. And indeed, we as viewers also have to be vigilant when watching videos by people who could be biased as well. I obviously don't think Nick is a bad guy for this, but I thought it was something that was important to mention since his video is pretty much the last thing I've seen on the situation. I invite you to watch both the interview and Nick's video back to back and put on your critical thinking glasses because I'm sure those of you at home may see some of the issues with it as well. 
I just want to say it's very interesting to listen to him be reasonable when he's so unreasonable about the situation where he tried to cancel that fucking kid for talking to that 15 year old when he was 18. Like it just feel like where what's the reasonableness rooted in? You know what I mean? Like what the fuck? What is it? you know what I mean? Like it just seems like a little off to me. Um. Imagine he hadn't like been chasing a story with that other guy and he just fucking created this video. He probably would have got a lot more views. On the internet, everyone feels like they need to take a side. People are being pulled constantly to one direction or another by creators on different ends, constantly fighting for their opinions and attention. But the truth is that sometimes there is no clear answer as to who is in the right and who is in the wrong. It's okay to not take a side. And I want to reiterate that with this situation as well. When I started researching this video, I'll admit it. I was expecting it to be a clear-cut situation of Gus being the terrible abusive boyfriend and for that to be the end of it. But the more I read, the more I watched, and the more I thought, I realized that there's no way I could call him that. Nothing in this situation is easy to understand, and anyone telling you that there's one person who is the guilty party is simply wrong. This situation essentially boils down to this. Four years ago, a young couple in a fairly new relationship was shaken dramatically by an unforeseen medical event that no one could have prepared for. The failures of the doctors and the medical system led to the issues getting worse and worse until it exploded quite literally in the worst way possible. The trauma from that relationship affected not only Sabrina with PTSD from the experience as well as panic attacks and postpartum symptoms, but Gus as well for having to deal with all of it. As Sabrina states, all of this was a big burden to put on one person, and you would expect frustration and even anger for having to commit so much time to all of this, especially if it kept on happening for many months. I can totally understand that in all these moments of frustration, Gus may have not said the best things. And while that doesn't excuse what he said, it does become more understandable as to why he said them. That, of course, doesn't mean Sabrina can't be upset at those things. I think anyone would be in this situation, and she's definitely allowed to open up about them. But the way she did it made it look like she was coming after Gus and trying to ruin him, That's or true, trying yeah. to protect herself with any plausible deniability by not mentioning him by name. I think she could have executed her videos and responses better, especially since Gus didn't go on the attack at any point prior to Wubby's stream. For anyone on the internet to pretend- well, I wouldn't really call Wubby's stream an attack, I, I think that's just him defending himself, uh, you know. Would have acted perfectly on either side of the situation, he's just lying to themselves. No one except for Gus and Sabrina knows all the ins and outs and complex emotional responses that was involved in this private relationship. And bringing it public just gives people online the opportunity to speculate when most people don't have any clue what even happened. The more people talk about this, the more messy it gets, and the less answers we have. Gus and Sabrina's relationship has two individuals and two sides. There isn't a clear winner. So why do we have to take one? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. So why do we have to take one? A winner? That last question threw me off a little bit. Okay. There's no clear winner, so why do we have to take a winner? I think that they meant to take a side, but Fine. okay. Bye bye. Okay, good, good. Uh, that wasn't too bad. I think that was my first John Swan video that I've ever seen. It wasn't too bad. Personally, like I said before, with the whole him trying to cancel somebody, um, not good optics. <laughs> um, you know, if he gets his shit together and stops fucking around. Maybe he could. Uh, uh, maybe he can come back. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub if you have Amazon Prime to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.